Uh, yeah, Coach. Um, uh, just uh, you know, what are some of the issues getting ready for them uh, with uh, you know with uh, Agnew getting hurt and them signing Mickens this week? Uh, well, first I want to say Happy Thanksgiving, to everyone. Hope everybody's doing well, being able to spend time with friends and family, loved ones. Um, this week, you know, going against you know the the. Our, our opponent, when they talk about Mickens, Mickens, we've already seen him before. He's a dynamic returner. He could catch the ball in traffic, go east, west, north, south with the football. Had the opportunity to go against him versus Tampa. And he's a fearless returner when it comes to that. So we have our experience with him. We have to do a great job of keeping leverage on the football and then making sure we finish on the football. You know, unfortunate they lost Agnew. Um, I hope he gets well soon. But overall, they're a special teams unit. They're a physical unit. They're a big unit that's physical at the point of attack, and they play downhill, whether it's in the return game or in the coverage units. So it's a great challenge for us this week on the road, and our guys are looking forward for the opportunity to go out there and put together a good performance. Yeah, what kind of season is uh, Logan Cook having the punter for, for Jacksonville? Well, you know, Logan, he's pretty consistent, strong leg punter. He has the ability to, to get, be directional both ways. Um, long levers. We can talk about his long legs and being able to get the ball off. He, he only he's only had one career block, which was a couple weeks ago versus Indy. That shows that he gets the ball off quickly as a punter. And then also too, he has the ability to either onside kick and kick off. So we're being prepared for all any situation that he's out there. But he is an impact player for their special teams unit. And it looks like they're using uh, Matthew Wright as a weapon. He's four or six from over fifty. Um, you know, so I guess the defense has to be mindful of that. But uh, field goal wise, uh, you know, what do you all try to do to unsettle a guy that's, uh, you know, made uh, 12 or 15 field goals? You know, he's put together a good performance with joining their team. You know, you, you look at that game in London where he had 250 yarders out there. Uh, it's, for our field goal unit, it's just being consistent with our pressure, you know, pad level, getting off the ball. And then, you know, get a knock back and just being effective and trying to get our hands on the football. That's what it comes down to. Every single play, whether it's a fourth down play or PAT block, we got to be consistent with our, our effort, our attitude at which we're attacking those guys. And then our technique, having low pad level and coming off the ball, running our feet after contact. And then whatever happens after that happens. So hopefully we get an opportunity to affect it. Okay. And last question, coach, in that uh, last game, that illegal formation coach, uh, uh, you know, share the thoughts on that. Um, you know, what what were your thoughts on that illegal formation call and how we all um, adjust? Well, it's more so, I mean, it hasn't been called since 2017. So, you know, they called it. But at the end of the day, we got to just make sure that we're being smart with being consistent with our alignment and just making sure that we're good to go and always checking with the refs. But it hasn't been called since 2017 and they called it. So we got to move forward and we're getting better with that stuff. So we ID'd it, whatever that was, and we're making sure that we're moving forward, making sure that we're not taking points off the board. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Dela. Thanks, Kevin. Mm -hmm. You too, likewise. Scott? Hey, uh, Coach, um, th this isn't your first time that you've had to bring a new uh, punter uh, into the system. Um, what are some of the uh, challenges that, that, that this situation um, presents uh, to the special teams unit? I don't necessarily look at it as a challenge. I just look at it as a you know learning opportunity and for us to grow as a special teams unit. Um, it's more so just making sure that you know terminology we're we're using the right. He's adapting to the terminology whoever our punter is on um, Sunday. You know adapt to our terminology and just making sure that they're good to go with you know their preparation getting ready for Sunday. So whether it's their routine, you know how they get ready when it comes to practice when it comes to games, you know, rhythm up with a young way when it comes to field goals, those little things. But it's more so opportunity and it's as opportunity for us as a grow as a as a special teams unit when it comes to that. So don't really look at it as a challenge. It's just an opportunity for us to get better. Uh you guys have have more stead on on the 53 man and you have Dom on the uh, practice squad, but is there any level of, of competition going on uh this week between those two guys? You know, throughout the whole team, in particular with special teams, there's always competitions. You can look at our, our special teams. You know, we always have different moving parts or different players playing different positions. Each week, at every position, there's competition at, 
at every single position on special teams. So that's the approach that we take to build that competitive greatness at practice so we can get quality reps when it comes to full cover reps, when it comes to punts, kickoffs, field goals. So every position we're competing. Uh, um, uh, 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 Thomas has has had a long um, uh, career in this league. What have you seen from him um, working with him in person? It's consistent. You know, who, he is who he is. Uh, does He has a great routine, does a great job getting the ball directionally where he wants it to get the ball to. He has quick, quick get off times and he's a he's a true pro when it comes to, you know, adapting to personnel, adapting to how he wants, you know, how a kicker wants the ball held a certain way or whatnot. But he's been great for the room, as if all of our specialists have been in our building. They've been great for the room and his experience um, and his knowledge is invaluable for our room. And it's a great opportunity for us to learn from Thomas. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Happy Josh. Thanksgiving. Sorry. Good? Josh. Hey, Marquis. Happy Thanksgiving. Likewise. Is there, a, when you bring a new guy in, um, a punter or, or whoever's holding for you, is there a certain number you want them to get to before they do a game rep? Is it, is it you know, make sure y'all get 50 in. Is there just a number that you feel like you've got the muscle memory? There, there is no number. I mean, you get, you do get better at reps, Josh. I do believe in that, but I don't, we don't really get fixated on the number. It's just more of a feel between all three specialists the feel and then also to the o line getting the feel for him as well but it's just a feel thing and we get we're going to get our reps in this week with whoever it is whether it's you know dom thomas or you know dustin we're able to come back those guys we just get a feel for it we get the rhythm going and we got to make sure that all three of those guys when we talk in terms of specialists they feel comfortable and they're ready to go come sunday and this is a totally random Thanksgiving, just because it's Thanksgiving question. I assume you have an emergency punter. I'm thinking like high school where you see defensive linemen out there punting. You know, mm -hmm. is there somebody on this roster that you've identified should you lose a couple of kickers for injury that he's the guy you tried out back there? Oh, yeah. We always have a crisis management plan per se. You know, we have that plan and we do have a couple of guys on the roster that have who's, the. Who's that? I can't give that away. You know what I mean? That's that's top secret. We might might use them this weekend. You know, so uh, hopefully, you no, know, we might not. Hopefully, we don't use them unless we're right. doing something. Crazy. But we have a couple of guys on the roster that that have practiced it and have done it before. You know, in practice or in games earlier in their their career, whether it's college, high school, or pros. So, thanks, Marquis. No problem. Why well, you want to come and try out for us? We'll get you out here. No, I do. I I, I do not. <laughs> I, I, I don't, not even uh, not even for that, but thank you for the offer. Oh, no problem. Well, we do workouts on Tuesdays. If you're feeling jumpy, you're feeling froggy to go out there and get some punts out. Okay. I'll keep it in mind in case this doesn't work out. <laughs> Michael? You, you know there was a uh, media punting competition in Detroit. Oh, I missed out on that one. That would have been great. We should have had that recorded. I uh, no, there is. Ask a text Amen. There, it's there. Uh, one dude punted, I think, like forty-seven yards this year. Uh, ooh, all right, D. -Lad. I did not. I punted four point seven yards. So <laughs> we'll get you guys in the indoor next week. <laughs> I, I'm I'm game for that. Uh, curious. You've been talking a lot about the multitude of punters you currently have on the roster. When Justin does return, how do you pick? I guess. How, like, what what goes into that? Well, you know, I'm not trying to really look into the future right now. Our main focus right now is getting, you know, getting this win versus uh, Jacksonville and getting the guys that are part of the, you know, 53-man roster, 48 for game day, getting them ready to go out there and give us opportunity to go out there and put together our, you know, best day of work when it comes to Jacksonville. Now, when the opportunity presents itself down the road, that'll be more of a situation and a conversation between you know, Coach Smith and, and Terry when it comes to those decisions. But right now, we're just focused on the guys that we have in, in the building currently. And when a team like Jacksonville loses a guy that you're familiar with, like Jamal, how does that maybe change your prep for kick coverage and punt coverage this week? You know, Agnew is a dynamic returner with the ball in his hands and having been blessed with the opportunity to work with him for two years in Detroit. But there's other guys on the roster that are dynamic with the football as well. And 
there's not there's not not going to be a letdown in like whole coverage wise, but just because they have a different returner. In order for us to have the maximum edge, you got to have the utmost respect for your opponent. So whoever's back there as a returner, they have a threat to take the ball to distance, and that's the mindset that we got to go into going into the game. And we got to put our we put our foot on the pedal, and we got to go, and we got to play downhill, be violent, and be disciplined with our leverage, and be aggressive and attack the football, no matter who the returner is. Appreciate it. Happy Thanksgiving, Marquise. Likewise. Appreciate you. Does everybody have a follow-up? Yeah. Dila, you good? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Don't eat too much turkey because we're going to have that competition next week. <laughs> See you guys. Take care. Yeah.